Okay, hey YouTube. So I got into an argument last week with another trans girl who said that SRS results aren't good enough for her. They're not up to her standards. Um, and I think that that's an interesting thought. Um, and it's kind of a loaded statement. Um, and she said, oh, you shouldn't be insulted by this. You shouldn't be offended. Like, I'm just talking my perspective. But it, for the thousands of trans women out there who have had surgery, SRS is and was up to their standards, which either means that she's saying, well, um, my standards are just higher than everybody else's, or we didn't actually get great results. Or that she has like completely unrealistic standards, maybe a little bit of something going on where she feels the need to not just say, oh, SRS isn't for me, or SRS isn't for me right now, but SRS isn't for me right now because I'm too good for that fake vagina bullshit. Because I have completely unrealistic expectations of what a vagina should look like. Because if you were to take trans vaginas, and cis vaginas, put them, you know, side by side, just photos of the vaginas. There are plenty of, you know, vaginas that you're going to get wrong because at the end of the day, it's pretty much a coin flip. Uh, there's so much variation, as I've talked about in previous videos, that it is impossible for somebody to say that you cannot get good results or good enough results because you can pretty much do everything to a trans vagina except attach reproductive organs to it so that you can use it to give childbirth or have a period. Those are the only two things you can do, um, you know, to a post-op trans woman. Everything else, fair game. So why somebody would say that is probably mostly to make them feel better about their decision. And this is the same thing that trans women will do with surgeons, where I cannot count the number of times I've seen somebody say, you should see surgeon X because he or she is the best. And I'm always just like, what is all of this surgeon like? you know, Fight Club all about, or whatever, like, all of the names, like, the, the top surgeons, the surgeons that everybody's heard of, you know, Chetawat, Supron, uh, Supron, whatever, however you say his name, uh, Broussard in Montreal, McGinn, Bowers, uh, Meltzer, um, even some of these other surgeons, uh, Rumor, Lee, I think, is one. Uh, there's a guy in England who does the surgeries. There are surgeons all over, and a lot of them are going to give you great results, even some of these ones who perhaps do it less often. But if you go see one of the trans specialist kind of surgeons, you're going to get great results for the most part. Obviously, complications can always happen, uh, but any surgeon uh, can have them happen to him or her. And a lot of it is the patient's context, where people will go in and say that, you know, how big your penis was pre-op is how big it is post-op, or how deep your vagina is post-op, and that's not true. Like, so much of it depends on your anatomy, how much space there is for a cavity there, um, where your other organs and sort of body parts are. Uh, that those things have more of a factor than how much donor tissue you have between your scrotum and your penis. Which isn't to say that the scrotum and the penis don't contribute at all, because they do, but other things like how well you heal are going to have just as much, if not more, factor in how much sensation that you get, uh, as does the surgeon's technique. And so at the end of the day, really, there is no surgeon who is the best. And I think if you go to any of those sort of 
top five, top seven surgeons, you're going to get their best effort. I know so many people who said, oh, well, surgeon X will try harder if you're not using insurance, or will try harder if you're using private insurance rather than state or sort of, you know, country-specific insurance. Um, they'll try harder if you're passable versus not passable, things like that. And it's just like, these are all rumors and speculation. None of it even makes sense because if I'm a surgeon and you pretty much live and die by your reputation, then do you really want to send bad patients out there who didn't give it kind of your professional best? No, because that's bad for business. So why would they sit there and arbitrage in the surgery room where I'm only going to give 80% of what your attention, your kind of exact, exacting detail, like, how is a surgeon going to give less than their professional effort anyway? Um, but these are the things that you're dealing with, with people who are talking about their surgeons, because they want to justify their choice. And your choice always seems better if you're saying, I made the best choice rather than a very good choice. And... You know, the best choice is the best choice for you. There are some people who don't mind jumping on a plane to Thailand, taking that 6,000 mile flight or whatever it is, um, you know, saving the money that you would spend on surgery, on travel, uh, being that far away from your doctor, having that language barrier. Those are all things that they're okay with because they feel the most comfortable with a Thai surgeon. Conversely, there are people who feel like the American surgeons, you know, maybe kind of have to live up to the American standards of care or are more conveniently located. Um, take your Blue Cross Blue Shield insurance, you know, whatever. Like, there are all sorts of sort of factors that are going into somebody's choice to have SRS and then who they should have it with, that saying, oh, well, this surgeon is better than that surgeon because that surgeon, she doesn't give good aesthetics, or that surgeon, well, he doesn't give good sensation. Like, no. <laughs> there are no kind of broad follow-up studies done on post-ops. In their outcomes, there's no empirical data out there to use to say surgeon X is better than surgeon Y. Uh, there are a lot of people who claim to have done their research and seen all this anecdotal evidence, but it's also confirmation bias. If you think the ties give the best overall result, that's going to influence your research because you're going to be looking for evidence that the ties do in fact do better than the Americans or the Westerners. Um, or if you're looking for, you know, whatever type of excuse you're looking for, you're going to be able to find it. Um, so just be happy with taking the best surgeon for you and don't feel the need to add on, oh, well, I went and saw this surgeon because they're the best. Because, so your, your vagina, it's second tier. Like, that's a safety school vagina. My vagina is the Harvard of vaginas. Like, listen to what that person is saying. It's ridiculous. Who, at this point in their life, after everything that they've been through with transition, still has to say something like, oh, well, at least I got the best vagina. You know, like, that person saying that says more about them than it does their surgeon. Just like saying SRS doesn't live up to my standards says more about that person than it does the state of SRS. Uh, because there are plenty of people who are having great times with their vaginas and, you know, keep on holding out for that better vagina that's coming down in the future from the surgeons who are already doing it today.